Hot up. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. We are back. It's been a while. It's been a while. We're in a new venue. As you can see. Uh, would you like to highlight that, by the way? Yeah, so we've partnered with Work Lodge. It's a co-working a big deal. business. It started in Houston uh, about five years ago. Uh, they're expanding into Dallas. We're here on Dragon Street. Would you like to do the this dragon is, sound? It, Apparently, I just failed at doing the dragon. We song. actually, yeah, we. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, see, I just feel like that's not. <laughs> it was more of a clearing. Recently watched Lion King, and I feel like that's where that's coming from. I am um, channeling Lion King on that. Simba. It's true. Channel. It's true. Man, Remember it's so bad. It is so. Anyway, bad. co-working facility out of Houston. It's a great space. A fantastic man. mission. We have thirty-three thousand square feet here that I will be helping fill up. So I've got my work I heard cut the out for Wii me. In there, I heard the Wii. Um, that's great. Yeah. No. And. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's it's an awesome space. Thirty percent of their top line revenues go back to international uh, missionary and just overall really good nonprofit work. They built orphanages, they built water wells in Cambodia. Um, they're just doing awesome stuff. Their their hearts are in it for the right reasons. And if you think about like the acoustics of most of their rooms, it's just a higher quality. Um, and like there's extra insulation between rooms. It's are a we collab- selling right now? It's a collab. Yeah, currently <laughs> there's a there's a. No, I, I really I do it. believe in I, it. I really I, do believe in I it because I've been in a it's lot great. of different co-working spots yeah. and I, th- I really think they're knocking this one out of the park. And the I owner agree. is a really solid guy. So anyway, we're very grateful for their support on the podcast. Retweet. Very, very appreciate Retweet it. all Thank of that. Yeah. It's going to hit the character limit on that. For sure. Yeah. We're here with Travis Kern. Oh, we're stoked. Hello. A best friend. Dressed, a f- best dress yeah, in I, here without a doubt. I felt smaller when he walked in. <laughs> uh, he just looks great. You know? Not in that way. I was about uh, to say, I felt smaller. <laughs> no, Why? Uh, I felt like I got shorter. He's a tall guy. But. Um, when he walked in, because he just, he, and he always carries himself like that. Yeah, it's fantastic yeah. flow. Got the glasses, the pocket square. I'm digging all of it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, the guys. swag, yeah. the swag matches. Um, so thanks so much for coming on, man. Uh, we saw you as an awesome uh, guest to have because you're an entrepreneur. You're relatively new in your entrepreneurial walk, yep. and uh, you're obviously very dynamic as well. So we're excited about it. Thanks for having me. Happy yeah, man. Here. So I think we're going to emphasize, you know, transition. Uh, I want to talk about some of the roots, you know, like the entrepreneurial roots. What do you think really drives you as an entrepreneur? Um, And then some of the things you're learning, like through this transition as a new entrepreneur, we're also going to obviously talk about your business and what you're doing differently and stuff like that. Sure. Um, We're also going to, we're going to start with something that he provided on the survey that was, he loves karaoke. Oh Lord. Um, do you have we'll any have data? Ice breakers. No. no. So uh, I can look up we can a song do, real quick. You wanna, I was <laughs> thinking <laughs> we should have put some more thought in on that. We should have. I'm like, well, here's your shot, Travis. I'm like, yeah. So bad. Yeah, you gotta you gotta talk a little bit about the karaoke. So yeah, karaoke's what kind of songs are you going for there? It is a lost art. I think my second life, I'll be a famous musician. But no, when I was 18, me and the guys were fooling around and threw on a beat and I decided to write a song that I'd like to self-proclaim made myself famous in my circle of you know 600 graduating class in high school <laughs> fantastic I was gonna ask Beautiful. you what was your class graduating yeah at? so it's like 42 it's kind of sad so I've kind of <laughs> car- yeah I kind of carried this with me and anytime I get an opportunity to jump behind a mic and sing a karaoke tune it's a little you know something I enjoy and I don't know if anyone else does I don't have a bo- voice of an angel but it's something that uh, I'll have fun with so, well, that's so I gotta ask go. like if you because looking at you I can't really tell if you're like more of like a Michael Bublé kind of guy or like you're gonna like bust out of flow here's what I'm getting let's guess you know? I think that he's a uh, I would say like you're on that hip hop uh, that kind of the white man hip hop deal like a Macklemore do we have sound effect do we have a sound effect <clears throat> okay I, my turn yeah. my turn I, I can totally okay. see this dude on a beach with a guitar like a Jack Johnson oh God. I can see that alright barefoot here yeah, we go I can totally see that here we go title Banana of my pancakes? song when I was 18 Banana Tree Hit, nailed it. Nailed Dude, it. Dude, you're good nailed at reading it. people. You're actually really good at reading you. people. Nailed I'm it. telling you. Trevor, nailed come it. fix my microphone, please. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, but I'm going to hang it right here while we're doing this. We're Trevor. not editing this out. I refuse to edit this out. He works quick. Why do you do it so fast and easy like that? Just, just gotta, you, know, just you know, we really are working with the best over here. We another are. Option, Shout out, Trevor. Shout out, Trevor. Shout out, Trevor. Technical God. support here. They're winning awards. It's just, it's evident. Self-evident. Get back over there. Stay quiet. So you're more of like a Jack Johnson type guy. Yeah, Jack Johnson vibe. A little old school. <laughs> Love me a little Hooked on a Feeling by Blue Suede. Okay. Oh, wow. It's my number one. Yeah, you know, that kind of jives already. with your current brand in like, you know, kind of that, that really solid dress, you know, but more, 
there's still some traditional vibe to it, and right? You got to get classic. the crowd involved. A little Ubi Chaga. There's, you got yeah, to the work both sides. Bit. So, uh, so not the best performer. Performer. Yeah. performer. Exactly. Yeah. Some people just have a gift. You know? They do. I can see that you don't shy away from like a speech on stage, or you're just never have. It just doesn't make you uncomfortable. Not that I like to be the center of attention, but I don't mind it. Right. Yeah, you that's know? kind of the same for me. It never bothered me. My wife's the opposite, so she gives me a hard time, and I'm like, no, I just don't. It just doesn't bother me. Same. My girlfriend's the same way. Yeah. yeah. Like some people just get freaked out when they speak in front of people. I'm like, just who cares? Just let it rip. You know. At least I've you're never doing understood it. the whole like uh, picture everybody in their underpants kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, me neither. I don't. I don't do that. Me neither. No. Why it's would you like, do uh, that? You either get it or you don't. At that point, I'm just distracted. Yeah. It's coming out of my mouth. <laughs> that point i think it has a if you, you have a plan you, yeah. you have a plan going into what you're going to say and right, stick to it right exactly you know seeing yeah, someone right. naked makes me uncomfortable so. <laughs> i agree I, have I you agree. guys ever noticed this like um we're all pretty good communicators i feel like we're all kind of we could all go give a speech did you ever feel like when you were like if you were caffeinated or if you were over prepared it actually hurt you yes like, like you're better winging it yes yeah, I felt to a that certain way. degree. Yeah. To a certain degree. To a certain degree. Like you need to have a template at least in your mm-hmm. mind, right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes I would go into like speeches or final presentations, even at work, like to like a CFO or something. And if I was tired, I did a better job. Because I'm less intense and stuff. Yeah, I could see you know? that. I could, I see, could that. see that. Well, it's also, I'm an ordained minister. So Are you? I, oh, no, I yeah. So I've had, uh, I've had on my fifth wedding this September that I've done, and it's probably the most nerve wracking thing, but. I have to remember to stick to a template because at the same time, it's not about me at all. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, right. yeah you don't want to get like the look, like, right? Exactly. When, when, yeah. the, when an look egg is... hatches, I'm like, dude, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, what dude, in my first one, like I was up all night the night before, like might have had three or four rock stars. I yeah. just was not Thinking on my game, right, right. Right. Yeah. to yeah. your yeah. point. Yeah. So it's just, you have to let it happen naturally. Yeah, so. it's like the same thing in sports for me. Like when I got up to the plate in baseball and if I was like, if I was like, who cares, you know? I would I would always perform better, but if I was over two and I'm like I need a hit in this game, I'd like freak out. You it's, know, I'm overthinking everything. It's funny to prep for this in your first podcast. You said the same thing with sports. You're gonna have less wins than you are. You're gonna make more mistakes, and yeah. I think you have to live with it to that point. Like, yeah, it's gonna happen. It is what it is. So. Yeah, you got to keep trucking, you know. Um, but that was funny. So oh, if yeah. we went to karaoke, like. Friday night tonight or it's a little eh, Thursday night's feasible. That's yeah, a feasible thing. We can set it you up. Do it any day. Um, be there. <clears throat> I don't know a good karaoke joint in Dallas. My favorite one closed. Really? Yeah. Santa Fe Rose. But we, if we went there, um, what, what kind of song would you pick? <clears throat> I'd probably do um, start with a little old school. Like I said, uh, blue suede hooked on a feeling. I don't mind going to um, Marvin Gaye either. Mm. Wow. You can mix take it, it up. That oh, low. You can yeah. change a whole mood of an evening. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got to keep it. But you really have to play to the crowd. <laughs> yeah. Just you got to kind of look when you're not good at singing, you, you have to play to the crowd. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's a lot of girls do that in Cancun. It's a straight body play. <laughs> no. There's no quality. <laughs> Oh, it's like, epic, Tina, oh. just put on Katy Perry and it's all, yeah, it's over at that point. Geez. We're yeah. going to get into some real stuff now. There you go. Um, we're going to hit you with four things. We've uh, slightly revised our model here uh, for all you loyal listeners and viewers. Um, the first one is called source. What does that word kind of mean to you? And just, I don't know, just start rolling with it. Source. Source. What feeds me, what energizes me. Um, I think with what's been going on in my life the last year and starting my own business, it's definitely, um, you've got to take influence and you can't just take it from one place. So I think mm-hmm. having a open ears, listening to what's going on, researching, I've never had to dig as deep as I have now mm-hmm. into what it really takes to develop a business and from that social element from do doing the due diligence with your factories communication uh, how to deal with chinese how to deal with it- italians it's just completely different are there books mm. on like how to deal with china man? i'm sure there is <laughs> but i could read them but then at the same time i feel like the experience you get one-on-one yeah. is that much you better you can learn experientially a exactly. lot better sometimes yeah but doing yeah. this again if i had to start a new business uh i feel like i would be a lot more efficient just oh, from this yes. last year, yeah, totally. doing it again, yeah, it would totally. get easier and easier. You'd be able to cut easier. some corners because there's not a, there's not a playbook. Right. There's no. There's right. not a playbook. Yeah. Well, that's also code life, man. I mean, you don't know what you don't know, no. right? So now, now yeah. what you do, no, whether it is dealing with China men or sure. Italian men or, I yeah. guess, Italian, kind of going suppliers, there. factories. Yeah, right, you had a right, book right. called How to Deal with China Men and the Occasional Italian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
a bestseller, I feel like. We just keep addending American. it with different cultures. Yeah, American. Here's what we learned about the French. I love it. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I think that's also that's like, interesting source. Yeah, so what, what are some of the sources that you ingest from? Uh, it's definitely been friends and family, I think, to stay positive. Yeah. Um, the ones that have been around with you and through what you've done in your entire life, knowing that they're there to support you, even though you're going to make mistakes, they might not see them, but they're there to lift you up. Mm -hmm. Um, past experiences, past employees, past coworkers, the ones that you've really leaned on in your past career, uh, whether a connection they may have listening, um, and also really figuring out your self-discipline. Uh, so I think a big source for me has been a calendar. Uh, staying organized, planning mm -hmm. out my day, my week, my month, yeah. uh, having milestones that you want to uh, achieve. And that was something learning from mistakes we I had I didn't do from the beginning of this and something that should have taken three months. You know, you're sitting six months later and like, what have I done? Yeah. So yeah. really refocusing on how you work, what your weak weaknesses are, your strengths and really sticking to your strengths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. learning that, okay, I am not great at being organized. So I need a tool book. I need to yeah. have a calendar that really keeps me focused, whether it's a daily alarm, an hourly alarm to remember even to eat, you know, so that's <clears throat> simple. I hear you on that. That's yeah, simple. I've never sure. had that problem. No. Never had that issue. Yeah, no, you don't struggle remember to how to eat. God, I, think, I, I think every time I've seen you, you show up and you're like, is there like food? I know. It's like a Brad Pitt thing. Have you ever noticed that? Every yeah, he's Brad always Pitt eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind I of the joke just, about Brad Pitt. Uh, yeah. Like in Ocean's Eleven, right, he's right, always right. eating, right? I think that's kind of who I'd play probably as a character of my own life. You have the not, looks. The looks are there. The, the looks are definitely not there, but the eating there is, is where the I The eating's home. there, and that's um, where we press in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like a lot of your source is kind of within, right? So I think that's the most important. Kind of a yeah, cool, you're an experiential yeah, exactly. person. I, I like, love that. Like I went and saw this guy named Rocky Garza. Um, he does this. Uh, he does this identity mapping exercise. He's this entrepreneur in Dallas, and he helps you figure out like what makes you tick mm -hmm. and what kind of. Especially for entrepreneurs, it's really effective because you're like, these are my skills. These are not my skills. One of the things that he really left imparted on me is, I have this weird guilt. Like I don't read enough books. I think it's because my dad was really studious, and he's like a CPA, MBA guy, like a numbers guy, a data guy, and I'm just like. I'm more experiential. I'd rather go like talk to someone for 30 minutes than like read on websites and mm -hmm. stuff. But I've always had this guilt of like, oh, I haven't even read books on this. And I'm like, if I'm not succeeding in something, but I'm not reading books on it, I'm like, well, what do you, what do I expect? Right. But I think he said to me something <clears throat> that really stuck with me. He was like, Chad, like I listen to one or two podcasts a month. And I'm like, really? Like, that's like nothing. And he's like, I just, I talk to people. That's my research. That's my form of research. And it kind of gave me the allowance to just go about things my own way. And that was, that actually relieved a lot of pressure for me. You seem more like more like me, like you're more of an experiential learner. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. And you read where, what some of the top CEOs read four to five books a month. Right. I, I don't yeah. have the time. Yeah. And that's another yeah. thing. I think that's where technology podcasts, whether you follow yeah. a certain blog or even Twitter to some degree, you can learn from a lot quicker. But experience for me, I think is main because you really get in a sales business you have to understand your client. I think that's not something I can read in a book. That's something yeah. by meeting with them, talking with them, asking questions, listening. Maybe that's why sales is such a special skill because it's so human. Like, well, there's not a single approach. There's no, yeah, because everyone's different. Yeah, right? there's not a single approach. I want to, by the way, I want to talk about sales on this call. On this call, we're on a call right now. Um, <clears throat> Line one. I want to talk about. I want to talk about sales because. We're all selling in certain some capacity, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of entrepreneur. It doesn't matter what you do. There's so much value in knowing how to sell. You have to sell your and idea. I want to learn. Yeah, yeah, like you have to sell your ideas to even like your spouse when you want to go after something, or mm -hmm. you have to sell to your kid that the dinosaur nuggets are good for him. Right. Like, sales is really valuable. Um, veggie straws. He ha he actually loves veggie straws. That's nice. not the issue. He dips them in <laughs> jelly. Like what? Yeah. But salty. it gets him the veggie straws. <laughs> yeah. So whatever. Um, I and I want to learn from you guys. Like what tactics are working for you? Um, we'll get into that. So source. What about roots? Roots. What does that mean to you? Your foundation. Um, think you could look at where you came from. It goes back to experience as well. Um, yeah. You know, I was raised middle class. Never went without. Um, however, I also had this enormous drive to be self-sufficient. I started working as soon as I could. Um, school was never really a focus. Uh, I think it was more about the societal outside in. You've got to go through the course of high school. You've got to go through college. But again, I had no plan when I graduated high school, I earned some credits from community college, from actually <clears throat> doing um, 
work studies. So basically I left every day at noon in high school to go work. Um, I thought that there was a lot more value in learning from real situations, learning how to manage money, which is not something you usually learn unless it's from your parents. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, leeching on actually, I followed a girl to tech, to be honest. So went and graduated, tech? yeah, Jeez. went and graduated with a marketing Freaking degree Raiders, from the business you. school. <laughs> you know what? They will. <laughs> they will, really he will. will. He comes back to it. <laughs> He's like two sentences deep, and he comes back. <laughs> oh, he was going. Never underestimate those record, Raiders. I hate you. <laughs> Never underestimate. Like, you got some wounds there, buddy. Yeah. Oh, man. No, but I, I leashed onto my mentor. Uh, actually, picked up a part-time sales job at a high-end clothing store in Lubbock. Oh, wow. And in actually, college? they have them in college. They did. So no, it, which interesting, uh, 70 year, no, <laughs> no listen, one got that. <laughs> like, Seven, 70th year anniversary this year, but, uh, they were selling $5,000 luxury suits in a town of 200,000 people in Lubbock, Texas. Wow. So, so that's where you got your first sales training. Correct. He taught me everything, how to be a merchant. I mean, same thing. He was 20 years old, borrowed 20 grand from his dad and built a legacy. Just an so, you know, it's something that you, awesome. I, I leached onto him Yeah. and Great he was, wow. yeah. And he was, he was. John Maloof was his name, and I'm still really close with his son, but he rode me. It was a part-time job in college. He rode my butt so hard, and I was like, I don't need this. Like, yeah, like I'm 19 dude. years old. Like, yeah. okay, make some extra cash. Every single yeah. thing that I did that he overanalyzed, I'm like, dude. So he realized that I was getting frustrated because I wear my emotions on my sleeve, and that's also something I've had to deal with. But he pulled me aside and said, listen, Travis, like, the only reason I'm doing this is because I think you can be better than me. And it like that's a huge sunk. vote of confidence. And I get goosebumps yeah. just yeah. hearing myself say it again. But from that moment on, I leached onto him, and I was a sponge to everything yeah. that he said and learned. And I think that that mindset was what one thing I had to overcome yeah. is I don't yeah, know everything yeah, yeah. and learning it from that age. So um, that's kind of where I got my start. And then uh, my family uh, has been in the clothing business actually, so I was kind of born into it. Um, so roots, um, wow. and then um, you know I. Very, very, very career driven. Uh, I made it very far with my past career uh, at Suit Supply. I opened the first store from the U.S. that they moved into the market from Europe. Uh, opened 25 more stores with them uh, across the world. So stop right there for a sec, because yeah, I, I want to know what made that first U.S. store successful. Talk, talk about that. Like, talk about uh, what made it successful, because that was a that's a, a little bit of a culture shift from Huge. the stores in in the U.K. So yeah. you had to like say, hey, listen, in the States, that's not going to play. This will play a little bit better. Tell me about that. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a Amsterdam-based company Amsterdam. entering into the U.S., their first store New York, um, in New York. Okay. So wow. basically left, uh, interviewed on Skype, left two weeks later for two months of training in Amsterdam. I was like 23 it's years old. first assignment. Yeah. Yeah. 21 years yeah. I had no idea what I was doing, yes. but obviously adapting to the American market a lot was the sales approach. It was very passe in Europe. It was more service. It was more clerking versus selling. And I think the American oh. culture actually wants to be sold to some degree. They want to know why your product's better. They want to know what your value is. They want to mm-hmm. know why I'm spending X amount of dollars with you where I could get it for half the price. Uh, so I think mm-hmm. service is a big, um, and you look at it now, experience, experiential service. You know, It's more of a lifestyle, and I think that's really what the trend is in now our own business is what we're trying to move towards. But that was the first, um, I think, challenge was adapting to the U.S. market. And then little things like sizing. You know, Holland, it's the tallest people in the world, so we had to adjust all the coats, <laughs> right? Interesting. And then, yeah. But I think the biggest strength, and still to this day, is, is people. It's who you have around you, um, how to motivate them. Um, how to use them and not in a negative way, but not everyone is going to be a manager. Yeah. So if they're not going to be a manager for you, what can they do? What is yeah. their skill set? And um, keeping those people through my career. And I think my, my proudest feat was, uh, you know, a guy that uh, in fashion was not, let's say, a stylish person, but his skill set was organizing and building management operations. <clears throat> and he rose to the top with me uh, five years. He's still with the company, just got promoted U.S. Director of Operations, which is huge, but put him wow. in a management role, never would have succeeded. So it's knowing people's strengths and weaknesses, keeping people. them around you, yeah, reading right, them. Right. Um, and I think the people uh, has been the most reason why that they've been successful um, in entering in the U.S. market. Uh, first thing you have to do when you go into a new city is find your staff. You know, you find one person that knows 10 more people that you trust. Next thing you know, you have your team and you can leave. 
and it's on to the next door, on to the next door. So, so there's a wow. trust element in there. Huge. And did you have did you have any uh, direction as to where the first door was going to go, or were you at told it was going to that work? point? That it. No. Yeah. So it was New York was slated. If you want to be a brand in the U.S., you have to have a presence in New Which York. Which is kind of interesting because that's like the fashion kind of capital exactly. of New York, exactly. right? I mean, that's like tough cookies to go in there and, and like establish go, yeah. yourself. Yeah. And then the second store was D.C., then Chicago. So hitting those major so markets. That Georgetown store was the second store in the U.S. That was the excuse me third. Okay. okay but okay. yes. Okay. And um, and then I wanted to move back home. So this is 2011. So 2015 is when they opened Dallas. Okay. And obviously it's my hometown. I'm very Texas proud. But you know they thought we were still riding horses. So Everybody come in and crazy. you know of course I handpicked it. Yeah, handpicked the team. It was like exactly the team that I wanted to start. Yeah. And um, you know we blew the sales numbers out of the water. And they said okay this is actually a market. So. Then outside of New York, uh, Texas had the most stores. So right now, I think there's five well, in I mean, Texas wow. total. That brand is going to sell really well in Dallas, yeah. specifically in Houston and Austin, especially Austin. Well, it was also entering into a space where there was no competition. Yeah, like you know, it's, really, it's, what's, it's a, a, what's a competitor of Suit Supply? It's, it's tough. I mean, anything off the rack. I mean, you're going to what, Nordstrom's? Yeah. You're going to Men's yeah. Warehouse. Mm-hmm. It's not sexy. Those warehouse isn't, kind of and then stuff, that's, you know... You know so they offered I'm, I'm a, over men's warehouse. I've tried like, it, to make that work. Yeah, and I think Joseph everyone a. does. Banks a little bit too old for us now too. Sure, I actually right? have a guy coming from Men's Warehouse next week, so we should probably. Edit <clears> men's that. Warehouse is uh, <laughs> is a thriving <laughs> brand, yeah. and uh, we'll be doing some consulting. It's wild, but I mean, everybody else is kind of like the mom and pop shop, right? Like a it's lot. it's who wants to you yeah. know like yourself grew up in fashion and doesn't want to be necessarily corporate with their sure. structure. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So there was a big gap and that's kind of what we're seeing now with my business is these, like you said, these one-off mom and pop specialty right. stores that are getting older. I mean, these guys are in their 60s and 70s. There's no succession plan. Right. They have a client base, but their client base is getting older, but the store's not sexy. There isn't an image. There isn't a brand. There isn't a social identity. Their son doesn't want to shop there. Right. So mm-hmm. Suit Supply comes in and there's the market and that's the new cool hit place to go. Interesting. However you're now entering a space where people are making a little bit more income. They want to have their guy. They want to have their corner store, their mom and pop. So why not provide that specialty level service? More of a concierge is what altered rival is considering ourselves as where you can come in and get full service. What drink do you want? It's experience. You know, it's experience yeah. driven, which you pay for, obviously, yeah, but you right. still obviously. have to have the convenience factor. When you go buy a Mercedes, factor. you're going to pay for a Mercedes. Oh, yeah, it's it's a a better have that you noticed that? It. Every, yeah. every haircut place now has like a bar and pool table and it's like, yeah. dude, a haircut's it's 20 experience. minutes, I'm in and out. I yeah, don't dude, need like a How long are you hanging out there, there, man? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, let's stop and play a game of <laughs> yeah. chess. Like, yeah, my wife loves me. It's I'm going to go play chess yeah, and get wild. a haircut. But that's interesting, too, because I, I really feel like everything has changed in the last, and you guys can attest to this probably more so than, than I can, but Way in more. the last five. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. And I mean, the, the social media perspective as of the rise of the millennial mm-hmm. age has co- probably completely changed sales, especially in, yep. in, in fashion, right? In suits. Well, the and, death of brick and mortar. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, and definitely. I think everything comes full circle. And I, I, this is an example, but I don't know the last time you guys ate at a chain restaurant. I'm talking about like an Applebee's or a Friday. No, if I didn't oh, have gosh, kids, yeah. I would never eat at a chain so restaurant. My point is, yeah. but the same thing now, everything went online. You can yeah. build any brand online right. with e-com. You've got a great yeah. social presence. Yeah. However, you miss what? Human interactions. Mm-hmm. Which like people are touch. dying for. Yeah. And Which now is it's why coming co-working back. is happening. So yes. same kind of yeah. cycle, yes. right? right? Let's give everyone remote capabilities to work from home. And people are like, well, I want to be around people. Mm-hmm. And they start paying for co-working. It's, it's this a pendulum need. swing. It's, it's, it's a, a, we're built for community, man. Exactly. Yeah. It's so, community within individualistic ideas. Right? That's a really so good way to put it. it's saying, yeah. I can do maybe this product better than a suit supply, so I want to go split off here, but I still need community yeah, around yeah, right yeah. to Well, And also people, that. what, find their tribe. Right, yeah. You know, they yeah, find the yeah, people yeah, that like they that. want to vibe right, with, right. And, they, and that's our customer, you know. Right. They, they want to have an experience. They yeah. don't mind paying a little bit guy. more. They want their guy. Exactly. I want, like, Avery's our barber guy. Like, we, he's mm-hmm. been kind of using the same haircut guy because he does such a great job. He Shout out to Avery. Job. I love you, buddy. Shut up. Um, but that's, a but that's my guy. Like, that's, and and because I just mo- I like his service. I like his price. It's a good experience. But that's another, like, if he moved locations, would you follow him? If it was 20 minutes further. 20, yeah. That's my, like, 30, you yeah. find a good barber, right, you stick right. to them. 31 minutes is probably my breaking point there. Yeah. Just practicality. So I want to ask this. How did you know, or how did you see, because I, I, I would assume that there's always been this drive to go 
separate and do your own deal. So <clears> when when was yeah. that process for you to say, hey, Suit Supply's been great. I've grown this to 25 mm-hmm. stores. Now it's time to do my own thing. So in the beginning, when you're growing and building and people are leaning on you and you're, you know, selfishly, you feel like the man, right? You're right. the go-to. And it got <clears> to the <throat> point where the company was getting really, really big and you start to become a smaller fish in a larger pond. And uh, it really took, um, going back to people, my business partner pushed me. We worked together at Suit Supply and um, we actually did a quick consulting thing for about four months with another retailer here in Dallas. And we're looking at, he, he's our ops, right? He, he's our, he's my CEO and he runs everything and I'm kind of the front as far as the sales and et cetera. That's a good That's kind of yeah. how it works, yeah. keeps me organized, yeah, um, yeah. ying to my yang. But we are looking at this consulting thing and said, why the hell can't we do this better? So literally we started buckling down, doing some research, and then it got to the breaking point where we left the consulting gig and he went to China to dial in like our fit, our spec, our, our DNA of our product. Is that where you get your uh, raw materials or whatever? We do everything out of Italy and um, England for our fabrics, but our production is done in China. So we were able to get it done okay, okay. and turned around in 10 days plus shipping. So, so your stuff else from the, Europe goes to China for work? Correct. Wow. But we also build up stock in our factory so that we can offer a two-week turnaround, exactly. which in custom is yeah. unheard of. You're six yeah. to eight weeks yeah, anywhere. That's, yeah. that's really so really weird. going yeah. back, uh, finding that person to really push you over the edge. I think I always wanted to have my own store. I wanted to have my own business, but never did I have the yeah. uh, balls to do it. Yeah. It takes someone uh, that, that cares jump. about you who's yeah. like, we can do this, dude. Come and on. that was it. And yeah, it was a light bulb that went off. And then also you'll always benchmark, right? You have to benchmark. So we were benchmarking this other company and we said, why can't we do this better? Looking at the mistakes, looking at the remakes, looking at the process, looking at the sales approach and saying, why not? And then what's happening out there with, I think the experience wanting to come back, the human touch wanting to come back. I, I really strongly believe here in the next few years, like social media will always be there, but the human interaction will want to be yeah, right. part right, of your right, right. So right. we can be predictors here. I think that there's so much activity on social right now that people are so inundated and all the health data is coming out. Like it's going to be, people are going to get to the point where they're spending so much on lo- time online that they they can actually tell it's causing health deficiencies, mm-hmm. right? And I think there's going to be like, again, pendulum swing to where people are craving word of mouth experiences that are not online. Like, have you heard about this place? I'm going this Friday at six. Come with me. Yeah. What's the link? There is no link. And it'd be like, oh, it's like a, it's like a a feeling of exclusivity too. And that, that breeds community, right? You're a part of something. That's going to come. Exactly. How do I get to be a part of that? Not because you saw the post. Well, it's because that, I invited it's you, you, you and you belong to something that not everybody else can find. Yeah, that's, that's exclusivity, exactly cool, right? right? That's the cool. We thing all want that. that, right? That's why, like, they're doing this huge project next to our house now, um, up in Knox, and they're putting a WeWork in there and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. But they're keeping the uh, Highland Park Soda Fountain, which has been there for. It's like a little diner. They make like milkshakes and stuff. It's adorable. You can like buy Mentos in there too. It's kind of weird. If I want deodorant, I can like swing through the soda fountain. <laughs> CBS right down the street. Um, but I'm so glad they kept that because it's like an iconic experiential deal that people don't want to see that stuff go away. Exactly. You know, it's getting back to the roots, you know. So we only have two minutes left on this segment. Um, when was get, that? Did we get through anything? Was there ever? <laughs> yeah, that's what we do on this. We don't get through anything. <laughs> we didn't get through much. No, yeah, that was good stuff. Like, I, I enjoyed that. So like, tell us when was that leap? Like when did you officially make the leap? I mean, we, after the consulting thing. So this was April of 2018. Um, we really said, okay, are we going to do this? So we kind of put our heads in the sand for probably about three months. Um, Got all our ducks in a row as far as sourcing factories, kind of our our DNA, the branding, et cetera, uh, which we're still obviously working on. Um, And then we started making our first sales in October of last year. Oh, you're fresh. So it's very fresh. Uh, We were operating out of a condo, six floor downtown, appointment only, no street presence. So completely word of mouth, which obviously has its obstacles as well. So So we found a really, really great spot in East Dallas, right next to Deep Ellum, um, beautiful street, uh, part of the Meadows Park Foundation. So it's all privately funded and great little boutique style, still the same vibe. That's your market Somebody's living room Mm -hmm. and we're appointment only. Same thing. You know, these guys are uh, hearing about us through other guys. And I think that's what's important is the tribe finds the tribe. 
Um, and that's right now our, our, our um, marketing. And then we're going to focus on really getting a brand image out there. And we're working with a branding group now that is going to kind of help put us on the map, but still keeping it a controlled. It's just me and mm-hmm. him, right? As we grow our team, as we grow our social presence. So it's been an interesting journey. Uh, I, I, like I said, there's not a rule book. There's not a map. So I don't know if we're on pace. I don't, you know, of course, I want it quicker. But uh, I think what we have is quality. And I think that's more important than anything. Absolutely, man. That was a smooth close. That was right a there. Smooth, Dude, he's smooth. smooth, smooth. This guy was, was built smooth. for this, man. Yeah, no Two doubt. Minutes. No doubt. There you go, uh, bro. Well, I'm excited to hear more. Break time? Break time. Break time. We'll be right back. What's up, guys? We want to give a quick kudos to our primary sponsor, Atswa Publishing. Now, Bryce and I knew nothing about podcasting before having a few jam sessions with him, and they made us less pathetic and more game ready in just three weeks. If you need your story told in a raw, authentic way and want to meet some amazing dudes in the process, check out Atswa Publishing. That's O U T S W A Publishing. However, Best way to see what they're all about is on their new YouTube channel. It's called Christianity Uncensored. Yeah, you heard it right. All right, we're back. We're back. We're having a good conversation at the break, and I'm like, let's get the damn cameras going because we want to <laughs> yeah, capture some of this. We just pretty much talked about his whole business model and all his strategies. <laughs> yeah. You I'm guys like, missed out, suckers. Yeah. Sorry about it. Yeah. Um, I, I want to get back to... Uh, I want to hit on two things. I want to I want to get back to sales okay. because you're like a natural born salesman. We can talk about strategies that work. Um, and what, but in terms of sticking to our format, uh, what what does the word path mean to you? And how would you how would you answer that? I think um, there's a pre-designed path that you know society puts on everything, and uh, I think that um, you can use that to scare you. You can also use that to motivate you. You can also use that to, um, uh, pivot. And you know, the path that I'm on right now with uh, being 32 and starting a new business, it's terrifying. Right. And if I look at that, it weighs me down and the negative, uh, all the negativity of like, wow, is this going to work? And it can slow you down. And why 32? Why is that a thing? Do you feel like you should have started when you were younger? <sighs> Maybe, but then maybe I didn't have the experience. So I, see, is there really I'm a right time? And I have those feelings all the time. You know? like, and I looked also, at Danny the other day and I'm like, it's over. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like I'm 31 years old. It's I'm over. Done. My business isn't where I want it to be. It's over. She's like, you are starting your, like, you're really young. You're actually really young. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves. We do. You know? And I think that there's, I can look at everyone else that's 32 and maybe they have a house and they have kids and they're in school and they drive this. And like, I have to ignore that. Right. Well, they ask or you a lot I, about what you're doing, right? Yeah. Or I'm not going to want to keep doing this. Yeah. So it's also looking at, you know, your priorities and, you know, my girlfriend and, you know, my responsibilities, my bills, et cetera, and being sure that those things are part of the path, but without diluting what I want to do, um, yeah. which is, you know, build this business. And, you know, we hired a lot of people in my past job and I want to provide them with a company that they can have full um, freedom to grow and succeed and obviously that comes with having the capital and yeah, having yeah. insurance and the things that you have to yeah, need yeah. so that's my goal is to be sure we're on that path um not just for me but you know for the people we want to do to to bring on to build this brand and also have them to succeed and have the freedom but path uh, i think that also looks going back looking in the mirror i mean what am i doing on a daily basis that keeps me on that path you know, is it setting your alarm an hour earlier? Is it, you know, having one more cocktail or not having one more cocktail? Yep. Um, you know, staying organized, uh, being sure you spend time with your family, being sure you take time for yourself. Um, those things clear your head where you can actually bring your creative juices back because you can just get down and sucked into this cycle of work, work, work. And you look up and you're like, what have I accomplished? So yeah, I, I'm don't a big make list. activity. Uh, don't mistake activity for progress. Exactly. So <laughs> yeah. I'm a big list guy. If I don't have a list every day, yeah. and I don't cross something off. It's not productive. So, um, yeah. uh, I think that answers that. I don't know. It does. No, no Hey, definitely. whatever answer you want to give okay. that answers that. Yeah. And 
I'm tracking with you. <laughs> yeah. I want to say also while we're here, like, dude, you're going to do this thing. Like, yeah, no doubt. I mean, you it's, are it's going to do this August, thing, bro. Sure. You are going to do this thing, man. It's hey, just going to take some too, time. I think, too, it's kind of cool, and it's super important to say as well and just kind of listen to you talk. There's two things. One one being that, that like you said, I think I'd, for most people, the path can be super daunting if you look at it from a I'm on the the highway and all I see is a paved road and there's no end. Right. To where some people see that as, like you said, motivation. Some people it's overwhelming. But I think if you put stoplights mm-hmm. on that road mm-hmm. and you get to one stoplight and you're able to assess where you're at with your list or with your goals, um, I think it kind of it makes perfect. That analogy. Where, yeah. You know, when you look at the rearview mirror and you've already passed six lights and, and now <laughs> you're good, your dude. progress. That's right. Good. Um, but gratitude, I love the fact gratitude too, that yeah. plays into gratitude. Yeah. But, I, you know, I love the fact, too, that you're it's not it's not so much that you make it, it's that your people around you make it, which I think is really cool it's and cool. something that like, I really want to highlight because that's, that's something that, that in society today, we get very, you know, almost corner ourselves into if, if we don't make it, we're not successful. Mm-hmm. Or if I don't make it, I'm not successful. And there's, mm-hmm. there's this lack of we, um, mm-hmm. which I just think is really cool. So kind of kudos yeah, to you. That's much cool, man. For, it's like the me. why behind the stress and the grind and all that kind of stuff. Like you're clearly not just doing it to be like this successful entrepreneur. It's yeah, clearly sure. like a, and it's an identity thing, but it's also a service thing. And that's, I mean, that's so important. And that's probably one of the big drivers of your, of your success is that it's not about you at the end of the day. But I know that there's a balance there too, because <clears throat> like with me and my business, it's like I can really get caught up in the, in the I, I, I and like the, what I want to accomplish and the vision I have for my life. And it's like, that's one of the best ways to guarantee it's not successful because it's about me at that point, you know? So there's a lot of little corrections along that path as well. Yeah. You know? That's just part of the learning process. It is. I think. It is. I think it's it's God making you a uh, shaping you into like a truly strong leader, like a leader who can actually lead a business and sustain a business for the long term, not just get there, but like build build something that's gonna last. I you mean, know? there's tons of businesses out there that are you know huge, but they're still not profitable. Yeah, and they sell maybe they're a hundred million dollars in debt. I think Bonobos, but then they sold for two hundred million. <clears throat> yeah. Right. So yeah. can we not? Cool. Build we got a, our money back. <laughs> yeah. Can we not build a healthy business um, and also build it with a purpose? And uh, yeah. I think that's the main focus. Um, and also, yeah, it's not going to be as quick. You know, we're self we're bootstrapping the whole thing. So dude, we got to be good. Things very, take very, time. Uh, Just uh, like good strategic. whiskey, it takes time. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Fine wine. Yeah, fine wine, man. So um, can we hint on that? What you said strategic and we were kind of talking while everybody was a little bit off the, uh, well, they weren't with us cause we weren't recording <laughs> Trevor. <laughs> they weren't invited. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but can, can you kind of highlight the, from a strategic standpoint, I think that you, you think outside the box, man. And so I think that's, you know, where did it come from? How did it resonate with you and where do you see it? Um, uh, taking, I, I, that's I, kind I, of a broad stroke, but no, I, I don't think anyone, um, likes failure. Um, but in business, you have to be okay with it, but I think you have to look at every failure as a learning opportunity. And I'm a big believer that everything happens for a reason. So you can look at it that, Oh, woe is me or, okay, I learned something. Mm -hmm. Let's move forward. Yeah. And also with, you know, starting a business completely self-funded, you know, there's a lot of avenues that you need to explore to basically check off the list and see if there's a light at the end of the tunnel or an yeah. opportunity that you could squeeze out of that. Yeah, yeah. You never know where that handshake's going to go. You never know where that additional email is going to go. But if you didn't send that email, you're never going to know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I big. think it's um, important, but also like knowing my personality and my strengths, it's like, I got to be face to face with somebody. Yeah. You know, you don't get a personality over an email and everyone's cluttered with a inbox of crap yeah, and social yeah. media is everywhere. But when's the last time you had a connection with somebody face to face that you remember. And that's, I think a big value of kind of what we're putting our business on is I that think that's personal your, interaction. Yeah. Again. That's like mm. the, the driving force underneath your business. You're not really selling suits. Like you're selling it's that human connection yeah. and that experience and how yeah. you feel. And I know that yeah. can sound whatever, no, 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 no. but I mean, that's I'm sorry we do when someone too. puts on a suit, you feel good. And I think mm. when, yeah. what's the example, uh, a guy in a suit to a, uh, a woman, a, a guy in a suit, to a woman is a girl in lingerie or something like that. Oh, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm botching yeah. it. Yeah. But, but it's like know, it's a guy's a kind of, it's kind of that right. feeling of like, I'm the best version of myself right now. Exactly. You know, like exactly. I look real clean. That's right. why and that's, I think guys enjoy pre-wedding photos just as much as the women. It's just exactly. a little bit different. Yeah, exactly. for sure. And pre-wedding cocktails, those are fun too. 
Well, and, and that's the whole, you know, the DNA, the, the, the message behind the name. I mean, Altered Rival. I mean, you're probably, your biggest rival is yourself. Yeah, I really you like know? the depth and of that name. It's cool. You can always drive and strive to be better, but you're really your only rival. You're mm-hmm. the only one that's putting red tape or holding yourself back. And yeah. um, I love that. that that's yeah. a brand, right? That's cool. That's cool. What about Summit, man? Like, where do you where do you want to be? What what is the definition of true success for you? Uh, true success, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. I'm going to talk a little bit about my personal life, if that's okay. No, that's not cool here. Um, this is all about business. It. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't appreciate it. No, that's it. what we we just want to know you, man. Yeah, we'll talk about yeah. you. So I, I, you know, my girlfriend and I've been together for eight years, which you know, a wow. lot of women that listen that. here, red flags. Why don't you have a ring on it yet? And my like girlfriend. I love, I love how he's ahead yeah, of that. Right, he's right. ahead of that. Uh, I know and what I you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> no, and I, I think. Love her. I'm committed. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I look back at you know my my past job, and I was traveling, and I was on the road, and there was temptation, and there was this, and there was that, and I yeah. wasn't really looking at what was important, which was you know the connection I have with someone that is totally the yin to my yang. And my biggest focus now is being sure that I provide for her and for us and our mm-hmm. family. We have a dog and being sure that, you know, her life and ours together is something that we can enjoy. And, um, you know, she has a uh, terminal illness, so there's a, a timeline there. And so for me, like starting a business and managing my personal life, and there's a lot to get uh, to this summit. That's a lot mm-hmm. of weight. That you could know? get some weight. And it can be very demotivating yeah. on a daily basis where it's like, screw it, I'll just go back to work and, you know, make everything or great. Or it could be motivating. Or it's motivating in the sense where we can have complete freedom and let's get this thing going and let's have full mm-hmm. support. So. My summit is is really being able to have my family and have a business and a successful business. And I don't mean successful as I don't want a private jet and you know that'd be great if that's where we get to. But going back to what I said earlier, I mean, we want to build a team of people that really love what they do and have a place, meaning a job, a company that they can come and feel that they can have their uh, freedom and their ideas recognized. And uh, that's kind of the goal is this building a foundation layer so that we can start bringing on people that we've employed and that we trust and that, you know, can add value, Mm -hmm. not only Mm -hmm. to our company, but also to, um, you know, let's say society as cheesy as that sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's fair. It's fair. And I I think Mm -hmm. you're keeping the right priorities, you know, the right priorities. Like I've met entrepreneurs who have sold their companies for 130, 200 million dollars and they lost their marriage in the middle of the building phase. Mm -hmm like the four years of building yeah. phase. Um, and when I'm meeting with them, I don't, you know, I don't know the details of their marriages, sure. right? Like I'm not judging them, but I don't want to lose my marriage over a business, right? Like, cause I can go build a business. It's hard to build a marriage. Um, and I believe marriage is, is deeper than that. Right. So, so you know, there's a way to do it. There's all. a way to do it all. Right. And like, it, it comes back to the why, like right. if you are, if you're, if your ultimate goal is to build a business and you don't really, anything that stands in your way, screw that person, screw that idea, screw that piece of feedback, whatever, this is what I'm going to do. It's a wrong, wrong mm-hmm. approach. It's probably going to fall flat because it's hollow, right? But if, but if the vision of your, of what you're creating, it also encompasses and enriches the other people in your life and, the, and, the, and, and, and it's, it comes with it with a spirit of like, you want to give back and you want to sow back into the ecosystem and you want to serve others and love others and, and build a beautiful life. That's healthy, dude. Like that's rich. And on all fronts. And a, yeah. a really good friend of mine said this and I think about it not as often as I should, but in this conversation, but what do you want to have on your tombstone? Mm-hmm. You know, what do you want to be known it's for? It's funny. Sometimes the I guy ask, that worked his I ask people, butt off. What, are you right, gonna, what or, are people going to say at your funeral? And they're like, whoa, dark. I'm like, no, I'm like, seriously, what do you want people to say at your funeral? Yeah, and it's interesting when you think of that, and that's kind of your legacy or or whatever. But um, no, I I think it really puts things, it grounds things. And I also have to look back, and I think you need to be humble and say, all right, well, I do have a business, and I do have customers, and so, and I do have my family, right? Can it be more? Of course, but like, what have we done? And I think you have to appreciate and give yourself a pat on the back. Absolutely, dude. Like, you're in the 1% of, like, there's a one, there's like a percentage of people who just go after their dreams. And then there's a percentage of people who have like had some actual success along that path. Like that's a really small group. It's actually a really small group. It is. And there's always one step forward, two steps back, but you know, it's just, can you get up and keep walking? 
Yeah, man, it's a grind for sure. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about sales. Okay. Uh, in the words of the great Barbara Corcoran, Corcoran. Uh, a good salesperson, a sales cures all is what she says. It, like the one common trait amongst all successful startups, especially is just they have their founder is typically just one hell of a salesman, right? What makes you a good salesperson? Uh, wow. Sales do cure all. It's interesting. Um, I, I go back to listening. Um, and there's listening with your ears. There's also listening with your eyes. Um, a small story. I mean, yeah. uh, you get a guy in the dressing room. Does he wear an undershirt? If he wears an undershirt, is it a V-neck? Is it a crew neck? What kind of socks is he wearing? Are they ankle high? Are they no shows? Uh, knowing what his lifestyle is, finding out you know where his kids go to school. Uh, do they play sports? Okay, uh, he's probably at the soccer field on a Saturday. Maybe I can show him no show socks. Like so, knowing where his comfort zone is in his wardrobe, and you know you can immediately tap into that. Right, and then understanding probably where he is situationally with his lifestyle, the given opportunity for an add-on sale. So really, like discovering who they are as a person gives you a lot more lines to reach out. And maybe you get shut down. Maybe he's not interested, right? But that's a guy that needs to be suggestively sold. Then there's people that are very visual. One right? second. What is suggestively sold? They they need that salesman. They need you to say you need this, and this is why you need this. Um, How long do you spend up front getting to know the guy, like asking questions that would illuminate those details that you just kind of rattled off about Saturday soccer? Like how long does that take? Well, it depends. If it's a first time meeting someone, um, I usually like to figure out, uh, I have a little script that I go through, you know, how'd you hear about us? What brought you in? What are you here today? Give me a little bit about what you do as far as he feels comfortable with yeah, yeah, to yeah. kind of get a, an idea What's your and sign, an image. You, know? you also have the guy that says, Hey, I need a suit. I need it now. Cool. You match his pace. You're ready for him. Match his and, pace. Right. So yeah. that's a big yeah, thing yeah, as well. A distance is something you need to use. Um, distance in a sense of um, you know, let's say you're out publicly, right? Distance as far as how do you get in their personal space, right? What's the vibe of the group of people that they're talking to? Are they open to having an outsider come in, right? Are they opening to prying questions or is it something you need to take the reserve back and maybe I need to meet that person through a referral, right? But uh, distance is key, um, eye contact in a sense to know that you are listening. Um, but sales, I, I've never been a short sale person. I'm more long sale, it takes a little bit longer. But then you have to look at someone's lifetime value, their lifetime spend. Um, you're gonna make mistakes, uh, but how can you overcome them? And if you have a rapport with a customer that can tell you, hey man, this just isn't good. This just isn't right for me. And you make it right, he'll keep coming back to you. And now he has yeah. an open line of communication. Yeah, because so we're we'll just gonna be people. transparent exactly. about it. Exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. So, because you also gotta think now back to, all right, Google <clears throat> reviews, Yelp reviews, anyone can go online and complain and ultimately get you. what they want. It's either so five, or, five you, or one online, I feel like, with reviews. But you know? how would it get there, right? Then that's yeah, me yeah. not doing my job saying, he walked <clears throat> out of my shop and that looks terrible. Yeah. And that's not only reflecting him and his group of friends, but also us as a brand. Mm -hmm. and me as a person and my character. Right. So mm -hmm. it's getting ahead of those things and that's yeah. just being completely aware of everything. Yeah. You know, even from the level of music in the store, you know, is the ice ready? Uh, do I have water bottles? You know, like little, little things, things like that. Is the wow. front yeah. porch wow. swept, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So um, being prepared um, is also huge. I mean, maybe do a little homework. You know, know, know who you're walking in, uh, who is walking in if you don't know them at all. Maybe they have a, you have another way of finding out who they are. Maybe it was a referral. Like, do a little, hey, man, tell me about so-and-so. Right. You know, as much information as you can, um, the internet helps. How yeah. much of, yeah. your, how much of mm. your sales strategy, because you said you have a script, like how much of it is innate, um, you feel, and how much did you learn from uh, maybe like, books or like uh, suit supplies training program and stuff like that? Maybe give me a percentage. Um, uh, I think a lot of it with saying a script, you need to go in with the, the routine that, you know, you check all the boxes that you need to, meaning here's your system. Because if right? it's just conversational, you might forget an area. Exactly. Of that. Okay, okay. So okay. at least you have <clears throat> a script or a sense of direction that, you know, you will cover all the boxes that you need mm -hmm. regardless. Mm -hmm. And 
if you're good, you'll be able to get off script and then pivot back to still right. be sure that you knock everything off. Because depending on what you're selling, there needs to be a reason why uh, your product is better or your service is better, what added benefit that um, you need uh, to provide to them. Um, uh, that's what I try and stay focused on the most and to be sure I'll go off a different path, but I always have to come back to my script and check those boxes. And then what I've read, um, old clothing guy, Jack Mitchell, um, it's the Mitchell group. It's a luxury clothing store in the East coast. Um, it's a book called hug your customers. And it really goes back to the point of knowing their kids, their kids' names, their kids' birthdays, Mm -hmm. handwritten thank you notes, having their uh, whiskey ready when they walk in, like having that uh, little something special that they can remember you by. And it can be sometimes as simple as a hug. And I'm a hugger, right? So you hug your customers. Some people are like, what? But it just makes them feel special. And I'm sorry, you're buying clothing. There's a reason why. It's either from a function or they want to actually feel and look good. And then his second book was Hug Your Employees. And I think that is the most valuable because it is an energy that you feel in a bar. It's an energy you feel in our retail store. You have to feel the energy. It's a place you feel welcome to. It's my home. It's your home. And I think those are the two books that have really resonated with me the most. Um, That's good. For sure. That's good. Both have to do with physical contact, which is probably something that, yeah. you know, our age group is is trying to get steered far away from and what you're kind of telling is like it's getting even, back to I don't even know if they want to steer away from it I don't think it, it's just what we've been told to do Amazon almost. yeah I got to compete with Amazon how can I personal touch yeah. personal right. service right. right I can't compete with same day delivery yeah you know but I can yeah. you know give a same day in real life experience and I think that is something that millennials I, I use my little sisters as an example I, I I, they can't socialize in person. They can't. It's sad to me. And we're becoming how robots. Many, how many, this is what, me and my wife talk about this too because there's so many. You know, when you walk Sorry, into a sisters. restaurant, I yeah, love you. Yeah. <laughs> but when you walk into a restaurant, how many younger kids are on a phone just to sit there and and let mom and dad talk? And I understand that that's you know you can test. Sometimes that it's just kids. about it's getting great. through the dinner, right? Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And but, I totally understand. But that. I totally hear you. But at yeah. the same time, like, what are we really teaching our kids? No, no, it's it's, it's we scary. Can't sit there I'm telling you, man. I'm scared hey, about what's going on. Yeah. No, don't talk. Don't throw food. Whatever. Me and me and dad or me and mom are having a conversation. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, no. And this ability to not be able to just sit here quietly mm-hmm. and and be okay. You know, but it's here's a phone. Exactly. It's hard. Exactly. I mean, I I play with blocks. Uh, nowadays the parents stick an iPad in front of them and say watch a movie and there's no creativity in that exactly. like you're just go, they're going brain dead there's no problem solving and then yeah man it's crazy to it's going to be crazy to see where we are in just like 20 25 years yeah. with the people our age at that point just how they interact you know yeah and this is something uh, so when i have the opportunity to uh, go to the grocery store there's the self checkout or there's the line i'll wait five more minutes to just talk dude, to the person. Yeah, that's dude, God funny. bless right, you, man. Right. Like, you, you know awesome. what I mean? You're People great. like, like Travis, how's dude? your day? Right, What's right, so right. What's so funny is you, there are certain things about you that are so me that I'm like, oh, there's other people like that. <laughs> I felt that way yes. about Bryce, you know? Like, we, we'll we say something, he'll say something about how, how, just like human behavior stuff. He's very perceptive about like human behavior and stuff. And I'm like, wait, you think that too? Thank yeah. God there's other people worried right. about that. Right, like, right. You know? So it's us three. You know? <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Cool, man. Well, I man, I learned a lot, dude. I learned a lot. And uh, but it, what else should we discuss with Travis, man? I mean, um, I'd love to. I'd love to kind of talk more about the brand. If, yeah. If you want to, I know sure. that you know. Altered I don't want to rival. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to get. Where are you into in Dallas referral, again? I can't so remember. we're in East Dallas, off Swiss Avenue. So okay. historic Swiss, right by Deep Ellum. Uh, we've got a great little 1,700 square foot shop, appointment only. Um, Tell me, so, oh, you know what we could do? Why don't we have Bryce walk in and where you go, you take him through like a sales process? Okay, that would be so cool. I'd right? love it. I'd love it. So you walk in and uh, you offer him a selection of, you know what? I'm just gonna let you do your thing. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bryce opens the door. I'll, you know, I'll be the sound effects guy. I'll be the sound. All right, you're opening the door. <laughs> How we doing? Great, fantastic. How are you? Good, man. Good, man. How'd you hear about us? Uh, actually, on Instagram. Really? Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Through nice. a podcast. Well, I'm uh, so glad you came in. Yeah, yeah. Glad to be here. You got a, 
uh, a fantastic store. Well, appreciate um, it. Just Look, got a, a nice glass of whiskey, so thank you for that. No, I you're welcome. One cube ice? Yeah, please. Cool. Well, one. let me show you around. We've got uh, all of our fabrics here. We do everything out of Italy or England for our actual fabrics. Uh, everything from outerwear to suiting to casual. So if you need a good pair of chinos, uh, a lot of guys now aren't having to do business dress. So sometimes they just need a good jacket to wear with jeans. Yeah. So hence we also do custom denim, uh, shoes, sneakers, everything. So really want to be a head to toe uh, resource for you for whatever your life may need. Um, price point, we start at a thousand for suiting. Um, and go on up there basically off fabric alone, but everything's got a half to full canvas construction. Um, we've got functional buttons. I mean, all the details of a tutorial custom garment, we store your fit, uh, in our system. So anytime you need something, it's a simple call text, or you can go online and actually go through our fabric library and build what you want on there. Uh, turnarounds usually two to three weeks, uh, quicker if you need be. Um, but main thing is uh, having a resource for you for all your needs, whether it's a wedding, whether it's a night out with the guys, you know, you got an important meeting, a job transition, whatever. Um, I even made a pair of golf shoes for a guy as well. So awesome. um, main thing is, you know, I want to get you fitted, understand how you like to wear your clothes, um, be sure it's the right fit for your body type, um, and then go from there. So what do you think? Blank canvas. <sighs> well, I mean, what, you used to play football, right? Yeah. You got some thighs on you? Yeah, yeah. you have issues too with your pants sometimes, yeah. waist, and so yeah. what, what we can do is be sure we hug your waist and then give you enough room through the thigh so you're still comfortable, but right. also gets, I see you like to have a fitted yes. look. Yes, love, love the trim look. Right. Exactly, so I think the important thing is having the balance between what looks good and also functional. Right. Um, so that's something important, we'll adjust this measurement here and there, um, and go through styling. So here's our collar selections, uh, here's our lapels that we offer. Um, I think this would be a nice button to accent this fabric uh, a little bit more versatile because I think you wear what brown and black shoes. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So I think this would be a good starter for you. And then, you know, as we build your basics, we can start getting a little bit more out of the box or depending on what you need. Yeah, shoot. And, so. and can I text you, call you, tweet whatever you, you need. If text. I need, Hey, I got a bar tonight, a hot date. What do I, what should I wear? I will uh, drop what? it off. Yeah. If you need me to be. So wow. uh, we do alterations as well. Um, so that's something that, uh, is unique. Yeah. Uh, a lot of guys have something in their closet that they just don't love. Yeah. And instead of throwing it out, like bring it in and let's see if we can give it a little bit more yeah, life. It's really cool. Um, that's awesome. So we're here for you, man. Beautiful. Yeah, Beautiful. We're here for you. So yeah, we'll get you rung up. Man. This is $3,700. Uh, <laughs> get it shipped. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. We charge for shipping. Is that <laughs> <laughs> that's great, man. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I could tell. I mean, shoot. I don't know if you've even seen my shoes yet and you, you already knew. How did you, did you look at his shoes. watch for that? I looked at watch. I've also looked at what everybody's wearing in the room and kind of got an idea, hopefully, of what maybe I could show you that you'd like to wear. So mm -hmm. be ahead of it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And like you said, man. Do you ever just... look at, like, do you ever look at, uh, uh, wh where's that balance between recommending styles that, that would look good on their, like, you know, their physique or whatever versus just letting them tell you what mm, they that's like? That's a good question. Both. I think you have to understand first, A, how they're wearing their clothes when they walk in. Immediately, you know, like if he That's wants a relaxed style. fit right or a, a fitted <clears throat> fit or whatever. And then, you know, understanding, have you done custom before? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? Mm. You know, based on your build, this is my suggestion. But then letting them talk and finding out how they wear their clothes, yeah. how they feel, what they're comfortable with. And yeah. I think you want to build that trust, but make sure that you're not putting them in a simple they're, they're not comfortable with because that's probably the biggest right, mistake right, you can right. make as a salesperson. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. But then, you know, suggesting options that might look better. Yeah. You know, like he does not need a shoulder pad. He's got big shoulders. He worked no, out. Yeah. Like it would just make him look bigger. Yeah. Let that yeah. natural shoulder fall to him, show his physique off more. He'll look 20 yeah. pounds more in shape yeah. by not that's putting him on shoulder. one of my biggest hangups yeah. with suits is there's that shoulder thing and it just kind of yeah. bulky. I hate that. Yeah. That's one thing Suit Supply does really well is they have that softer more summer fabric that's lighter and that's what yeah. we specialize in that's especially so being in, in dallas right now, and yeah, we've just yeah. taken a lot of the cool. the layers out of the garment yeah. lighter canvassing lighter shoulder pads so it's something that you just want to wear versus mm -hmm. i have to put my right, suit on right mm -hmm. yeah. right so a big thing for us is that day to night you shouldn't have to look like you're coming from your office right so if that jacket can be worn with a pair of jeans and a pair of sneakers like great you've solved two problems in one and you don't mm -hmm. feel uncomfortable in your work attire 
So yeah, that's yeah. a big thing for us is functionality, versatility, and also just being sure you're comfortable in your own skin. Yeah, exactly. No, I love it, dude. I love it. Um, so are we going to have like a... I mean, I feel like I need to come in and actually. I think so. Try I mean, on. If you want to go on Instagram on. now, you could book an appointment. I got my phone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why are you asking permission? Yeah, go grab your phone. You're the, actually, you're the leader of this outfit. Because I used to give you a hard time about being. I've been trying to get Chad to come in too. You know. Yeah, dude, you're a little bit outside my budget range right now, man. No. But Bryce will sponsor the whole deal. So <laughs> we'll be good. It's on good that. to have friends in He's high got places. Got that NFL money, man. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I guess I'll ask you one more question. Sure. Because uh, I want to see another smooth two minute. <laughs> that was so nice. Um, you know, how has how has entrepreneurship changed you personally? Um, I think it's pushed a lot of boundaries for really what my output can be. Um, knowing that I need to finish this project and staying up two more hours, my mm-hmm. productivity will decline versus mm-hmm. just getting a good night's sleep and getting up and knocking out in the morning. So the quality's there. So really discipline and balancing work life. Um, as I, you know, I have a family, so that becomes a priority as well. Mm -hmm. And being sure that I have date nights, Mm -hmm. but those date nights also, you know, I'm out at a place that I might meet clients, right? So how synergistic synergize the two exactly. But, um, you know, I, I think also not having the answer, there's no one that's going to give it to you. You have to find it. Mm-hmm. And that's I think that's been the biggest it. mind shift is I do need to spend three hours on the internet researching mm-hmm. this because I don't have a boss to ask. And yeah. that's been a biggest change too. Yeah. You yeah. know, because I don't have a lot answer. of resourcefulness. It does. You know? It does. And it There's forces no you to make option. the best decision that you think is yeah, the best yeah, decision. Yeah. And just, and then let it go. Like exactly. just be okay with the results. Yeah, exactly. All right, dude, what's well, been awesome having you, man. No, this has been great. This Beautiful. has been awesome. Thank you for having me in great yeah. new space. This is yeah, awesome. man. We're doing our best. We're gonna make this podcast room a lot cooler. Can we try the slide before I leave? Uh, yeah. If I bolt it down, okay. I gotta bolt right, it down I, first. I'll, I'll yeah. wait. I don't want to rip your suit. <laughs> All right, oh, man. <laughs> All right. I guess over and Altered out. Altered rival, man. Altered rival. Thanks Check him out, Travis Kern. Cheers.